Greetings and welcome. We are in Junior English, and we are now going to address Emily Dickinson's little classic, Water is Taught by Thirst, on page 417. We're going to see this in our hymnal as the final of the Dickinson offerings, and what an interesting little poem it is. Read it with me now together on 417. Water is taught by thirst, land by the oceans past. Transport by throw, peace by its battles told, love my, by memorial mold, birds by the snow. Now, I, it, it's at this point that a lot of my students start to say, even though I don't always understand exactly what Dickinson has to say at the beginning of the poems, by the time we finish with one of these poems, inevitably I have this feeling that I've learned something or I've had to think in a different way. Now, we're going to actually start. Notice we start at all different places in the, in the reading process. I'm actually going to go to 3A on this one because I believe in an introductory lecture, I, I introduced you to another Emily Dickinson poem, which is not in our hymnal, that went something like this. Success is counted sweetest by those who ne'er succeed. To comprehend the nectar requires sorest need. And I think I said to you something about there's two kinds of people that say, I want a drink or I need a drink. The first is somebody who just gets up out of class and says, dude, I need to get a drink. The other, oh yeah, look at the lines. Water is taught by thirst. Put in your own words at level one. What is she saying about the art of appreciation? The art of appreciation. I like that term. And I think one of the things we can learn from Emily Dickinson's poetry is to learn to appreciate the things we see every day. And in so doing, see it differently. What would it be like to go for three days without water? And how would you look at it differently? What would it be like to have to live in a place where water was so scarce that it became a commodity that's so precious? What would that be like? Of course, our assumption is, right, there will always be water. And we'll always have good water to drink. And there will always be, without realizing, of course, that last night, are you ready for this? There were over a million people on this planet who went to bed without clean water to drink. What? Dude, why didn't they just, like, go to the bathroom and, like, turn the spigot on and just get some water? Uh, well, why didn't they just at least open up a bottle of water? Uh, well, surely they got a Nelgene with some water. It's, uh... We're talking about people who can't find water that's clean. It's got garbage in it, and they know it. And so for them, it's infected. Ooh. Water is taught by thirst. Well, what about land? Well, you don't appreciate land until you've been on the ocean. For example, go out in the middle of the ocean. Some of you have had this experience where you've been on a boat or something and you maybe didn't like that experience very much and you're out there in the middle of all this water, right? And then all of a sudden, there's the land. We think, of course, don't we, of those famous stories where those explorers would stay on water for long periods of time and then all of a sudden see the land. What that must have felt like to see finally the land and to feel safety. How about transport, right? Transport. You appreciate the ability to have a really happy mood. Notice the words here of your, of your uh, sidebar on page 417 are ecstasy or rapture. In other words, think of it this way. You don't know about the value of a happy feeling unless you've had sad feelings. You might write that down at level one that way. You appreciate happy moments because you've known sad moments. I remember once a young lady saying, I know exactly what this is like because it's so strange. Last night I was sitting with my boyfriend and we were having the greatest time and he had this huge smile on his face. It was so amazing and he was with me and everything was great. And then all of a sudden I looked up and his face went from a smile to first no smile, and then to a frown. And I went, honey, what's wrong? And he said, I'm really sad all of a sudden. And she's like, why? And he said, because I know this can't last. 
I think we better break up. And she's like, what are you talking about? You are so unbelievably happy. And he's like, I am as happy right then as I've ever been in my whole life. That's why we have to break up. Because it can't last. It can't last. And she was like, that doesn't make any sense. Your whole life is like this. Sometimes you're happy, and then it goes away. And then you're not happy anymore. What about peace? <sighs> Solitude. Look at the next line. What makes peace so profound? Right. It is the fights. It is the battles. Why is it that so many of my seniors on graduation day walk across that track and they have such a powerful feeling of joy. And some of those same students, I heard them talk almost every day about how much they hated school. And yet, at that moment, huge joy. Why? Well, you don't appreciate graduation until you've gone through the hell of school. That's just the way it is. I hate school because it's so hard. Right. Which is what will make graduation moment for you so powerful. You did it. You accomplished something, something that other people maybe didn't accomplish, but you did it. You stuck with it. The battles help you to enjoy the peace. Uh-oh. What about, what about uh, love? Well, that's an interesting way for her to say it. Memorial mold. <laughs> okay. That's a, a, a fancy way to say the graveyard. Now, that's interesting. When you drive by the graveyard the next time, see, that's what the power of a good poem will do for you. Next time you drive by a graveyard, she says, you're going to think about love. What? Love? When I drive by a graveyard? Right. Because the people you love the most, either you'll leave them or they'll leave you. That is the way it works. That is the way it works. There's no other way. And to that degree... You learn to appreciate so much more when you have that perspective. Love for you is made more powerful in the realization of the potentiality of loss, in her case here, death. Well, what about, it's a fascinating way to end this poem, and maybe it's a brilliant, brilliant way for us to finish our time talking about Emily Dickinson. What is it that birds and snow have in common? Very little. You don't appreciate the joy of spring and all those birds unless you have that long, snowbound winter. And for those of us that live with long winters, some of us not liking those long winters very much, we're reminded of what Shelley says in his famous poem, Ode to the West Wind. I'm now at level 3A. Ode to the West Wind. He says, if winter comes, can spring be far behind? Question mark. In other words, you got to go through long winters to get to beautiful springs. Well, it's finished now. In some ways, students have said at, two, at 2A, this is really a poem about appreciation, about understanding. But I'd like you to jot down the word hope, H-O-P-E, hope. Emily Dickinson wrote a famous poem. It's one I wish I could have taken time to study with you. Hope is a thing with feathers. You might jot that one down at 3A. It's a brilliant little poem. Hope is a thing with feathers. Hope is like a bird that sings in the middle of the storm. Notice in this poem, when you don't have water, you hope for water. When you don't have land and you're on the ocean, you hope for land. When you don't have a happy feeling, you long for it. When you don't have peace, and you're in the middle of war, battles, you hope for it. When you don't have someone who you love, you appreciate how much love matters. And of course, when you have snow, you've got no birds. They're all gone. But there's the hope the spring is coming. To be another brilliant use notice of the dash. Emily Dickinson is so enamored of the dash and the way that the dash can kind of set up phrases. Notice the word by in this poem. Repeated. Let's call it poetic repetition. Water is taught by thirst. Land by the ocean. Transport by throws. Notice oh, the word by here 
is like a gong, that, a mantra that keeps kind of resounding, right, to bring you to bring you to that final beautiful line, birds by the snow. 3A, observation. Do you have a text that can connect you to the concept of appreciation or gratitude? There's a famous line that says, you never know what you have until it's gone. Do you have a film that teaches that? Do you have a song that teaches that? Do you play a video game that teaches that truth? Video games can, can teach a lot of important ideas once you start thinking at 3A about the relationship where you lose something and then only then do you appreciate what you have. Right? What's your favorite movie about, about dying and death as proving the power of love and the existence of love? Of course, we already mentioned success is counted sweetest not one of all the purple hosts that took the flag today can tell so well the definition of victory as he defeated die upon whose forbidden ear the strains of victory burst agonized and clear. That idea that it's the losers who actually can appreciate winning, not winners. And in your life, of course, now the three B. Can you, can you write about the things you're learning to appreciate? What are the things that you now are finding you appreciate more? Sometimes juniors and seniors in high school will say to freshmen, man, enjoy your time in high school because it comes and goes so, so fast. And enjoy the time you've got. Enjoy your friends. Enjoy the experiences because they go away. Once they're gone, you don't get them back. Enjoy the life that you have right now because it goes away. Old timers will always talk to young people about enjoy the life you have right now because you don't have it for very long. You only have it for a brief period of time. Enjoy. Enjoy what for you? What is it that you want to try to learn how to enjoy a little bit more in your life. To try to enjoy and show some gratitude, we might even say. Some enjoyment. Of course, birds and snow, right, are symbols, aren't they? Right? The difficulties in life often make us hope for. What do you hope for? Last question. What do you hope for? Is there something right now that you're looking forward to, that you're hoping forward to, other than maybe the end of this lecture, huh? Thank you guys. An introduction to Dickinson and the work of Emily Dickinson.